Hiya, Rob. It's Julie. Um, listen, I've tried your mobile, but um, it's really important I really need to speak to you, so I'll just um, I'll try. Did I mention that it's really important? Anyway, so, I mean, you've got, you've got my number, so... Before Amelia Clark joined the cast of HBO's most popular show of all time, Game of Thrones, playing Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, a.k.a. Protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the Mother of Dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. Before becoming a symbol of female empowerment, penning an op-ed on HuffPo about feminism and starting the hashtag free the P. I feel like there's a little bit of inequality between the amount of nudity that happens with women, yeah. this woman yeah. in particular, yeah. and, and, and it happens with the other guys. Free the penis. Yeah. You want to free the P? Free the so we start it now. It's a hashtag. Free the P. Free the P. Before lighting up the silver screen, scoring a role in the upcoming Han Solo Star Wars movie, and as Sarah Connor in Terminator Genesis. It's interesting for Sarah because she maintains traits that we see in Terminator 2, but she discovered them at a much younger age. Before she was nominated for three Primetime Emmys and four SAG Awards, was named Esquire's Sexiest Woman Alive in 2015, and became one of the highest paid actors on television, earning a reported $2.6 million per episode. Amelia Clark grew up in the English countryside, determined to become an actress from the time she was just three years young. An artsy country girl from a humble background, she never quite fit in at the fancy boarding school she attended in Oxford. When it came to getting into a good theatre program after high school, Amelia was rejected over and over again until she finally managed to get into a middling school by the skin of her teeth. While there, she once again failed to fit in or earn praise from her teachers. In fact, she was just about ready to give up on acting altogether by the time she was cast to play the role that would change her life forever and set the world of cable television on fire. <sighs> My name is Michael Credden, documenting the life and career of Amelia Clark prior to fame. Here for you, I'll be for their famous. Now, I've covered a ton of other Game of Thrones actors and actresses last year, but some of those videos need an update. Like, real bad. She believes that taking this approach in her career is what will keep her working long after Danny has claimed the Iron Throne. Well, hopefully, at least, I hope. I wonder if she'll take a meeting with me. So as always, be sure to let us know who you want us to document next or update in the comments down below. Whenever he looked at me, I somehow felt right in this world. I am certain his affections were growing for me and I am certain of my own love. Amelia Isabel Euphemia Rose Clark was born on October 23, 1986 in London, England and grew up in the Berkshire countryside. She told Rolling Stone magazine, I grew up with a stream in the garden and with fields everywhere. We used to go mushroom picking, there were ducks, it was idyllic on every level. Amelia grew up with an older brother, her mother Jenny worked her way up from secretary to marketing VP and is now the director of the Anima Foundation, a charity that provides food and school supplies for young people in Ghana. Her father worked as a roadie before becoming a theater sound engineer. When Amelia was three years young, her father was working on the musical show Boat, and seeing that show sparked Amelia's lifelong passion to become an actress. As a child, Amelia attended boarding schools in Oxford. She studied at Rye St. Anthony before following her brother to St. Edward's School. While she was an artsy kid from a middle class family, her wealthier classmates were more interested in sports. She said, My school was quite posh and I never quite fit in that mold. I was really artsy and no one else was. They were all like lawyers who did tennis. I was crap at tennis and I didn't care about law. Coming to the end of her high school career, Amelia applied to three highly respected drama schools, RADA, Lambda, and Guildhall, but she got rejected from all of them. That sucks. So after high school, Amelia worked as a waitress, saved up some money, and spent some time backpacking around South and Southeast Asia. She reapplied to university, this time applying to every school she could think of. A whole new round of rejections followed. Then one school, the Drama Centre London, gave her a call informing her that a student had broken her leg, and they were willing to admit Amelia in her place. Okay, thanks. 
I'll take it. In school, Amelia once again was less than popular. She was often cast to play old ladies and prostitutes, and she was no one's favorite student actress. Since none of her teachers considered her to be the next big thing, Amelia decided to be practical about her chosen career. After graduation, she gave herself one year to make it as an actress. With this added pressure, she was willing to do anything. She played Sense for the company of Angels Theatre, and she also appeared in two commercials for a suicide hotline called Samaritan. And we have the video evidence. <laughs> She also agreed to star in a University of London student short film titled Drop the Dog. Hi, you're Rob, it's Julie. Hi, you're Rob, it's Julie. Again, listen, I've, I've tried your mobile, uh, I've tried your home phone, but um, uh, I, I'll, I can just try it again. Listen, why aren't you answering your phone? Eventually, a few better parts would roll in. She landed a small role on the British TV show Doctors. Haven't they told you, darling? It was a misunderstanding, that's what? all. You stalking me around campus with a pair of binos like some pervert. Steady on. She also appeared in a made-for-TV Jurassic Park ripoff titled, wait for it, Triassic Attack. Spoiler warning, it's not as good as Jurassic Park. <laughs> Needless to say, her acting career wasn't exactly paying the bills, and during this time, what was paying the bills was her stint as a telemarketer. As her year out of drama school was coming to an end, Amelia was beginning to consider alternate life plans when her agent gave her a call about an audition for a new HBO show titled Game of Thrones. Sounds like a great opportunity, but it probably didn't feel like one at the time. After turning to Google to do some quick research about the role, Amelia discovered that Daenerys Targaryen is described in the books as a tall blonde. Not a likely role to nab for a 5'2 brunette. Unbeknownst to Amelia, Game of Thrones had already shot an unaired pilot starring Pride and Prejudice star Tamsin Merchant. The original pilot had numerous issues and for the reshoot, Tamsin opted to leave the show and continue her film work instead. So just like drama school, Amelia got an opportunity because another girl dropped out. Amelia nailed the audition so much so that creators D.B. Weiss and David Benioff they wanted to see more as Weiss recalled, We watched her audition on a tiny 2 inch by 2 inch video window on a computer in David's kitchen, then we met her in London, this fun friendly easy going person who was about 5 foot nothing and we were like, you did that, do it again. So when she finally met the show's executive producers, she went into the audition more nervous than usual. And after performing her sides, the ever awkward Amelia found a way to embarrass herself. I was asking them if I could do anything else. And, um, and David Benioff suggested I uh, do a dance. Ha ha ha, because that's a... And um, so I did. Oh no. Yeah, she danced the funky chicken and the robot. Still, the showrunners liked what they saw, Amelia got the role, and premiered on HBO as Daenerys Stormborn in April of 2011. Let them see. You have a woman's body now. It's not a typical brother-sister relationship by our lights. Thanks to the great exposure she got from this role, Amelia would be getting offers left, right, and center. In 2012, she appeared in Spike Island and the short film Shackle. Now I've never heard of either of these, but Amelia might not have had her wits about her around this time as she was dating Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane for about six months. Giggity, giggity, giggity. In 2013, she voiced the character on Futurama, worked with the likes of Jude Law in the movie Dom Hemingway. She also made her Broadway debut that year, playing Holly Golightly in the production Breakfast at Tiffany's. Then in 2015, she starred as Sarah Connor in Terminator Genesis. Next year, she starred in the film Me Before You and even voiced an appearance on Robot Chicken. A role in Voice from the Stone and the yet to be released Above Suspicion followed in 2017. In 2018, she is due to appear in a so far unknown role in a yet to be titled Star Wars spin off. It's about Han Solo's early days, and even though she's got to keep a pretty tight lip about the project, she did share a bit of behind the scene footage with her fans. I've got 10 million followers on Instagram. It's great, huh? 
Today, Amelia remains best known for her role on Game of Thrones, by far HBO's most successful venture of all time. But with the Mother of Dragons drive, I wouldn't be surprised if she continues to light it up in Hollywood long after the fight for the Iron Throne is over. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCrud. Thanks for checking out this video. Two more videos are down below. Be sure to check those out. Why don't you hit on our actor playlist? We got all sorts of goodies in there for you, or you can pick this video we picked for you. One of my faves. I really don't know what it is, but it looks pretty good. All right, see you guys in another video. Boom! Before becoming a symbol of female empowerment, penning an op-ed on HuffPo about feminism and starting the hashtag free the pee. What's that mean? Free the penis. Oh.